Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry. I'm a high school history teacher and not a member of the Illuminati. Welcome back to another History Teacher Reacts video. All right, you guessed it. Today's video is covering the Illuminati. And it's been a while, but we are going back to extra history. Video link is going to be down below. Make sure you're supporting those guys. They are awesome. And thank you for liking this video if you liked it. All right, let's get started. All right, the first time I remember hearing about the Illuminati was in that Dan Brown book, uh, Angels and Demons, which was great. So we'll see what's going on here. I know it's pretty much memed like crazy. Illuminati run the, uh, you know, run the world, but let's see what Bavaria, they got here. 1785. Guards on the road are alerted to keep an eye out for suspects fleeing the country. Bavarian police hammer on doors. For the Prince Elector, Carl Theodore has discovered a secret plot. A subversive. By the way, before this is before German unification. So the Germany, as we know it, uh, did not exist yet. That's not going to be for another century. Group has wormed its way into the leadership structures of power. The post office, Different kingdoms the army, back then. Freemasonry, the universities, spreading its credo of secularism, atheism, and the restructuring of society. Members of the group who are caught what I've are heard, arrested. You know. Police seize tranches of documents. That's how it was in Angels plans and Demons. For a silent revolution. Yet still at large is their leader. A man known by the code name Spartacus. It was like pro science, vice haupt, anti religious the dogma. Of the Illuminati. Of course, it's no secret that NordVPN helps our order stay after the episode. Welcome back, Initiate, to the second grade of wisdom in the Auto Extra Historia. What? Today, what? we shall initiate you into the Snitches knowledge of the stitches. mysterious <laughs> Illuminati. But first, the supreme excellent lawgiver must reveal you a new sacred rule binding our covenant. Don't Google this stuff. Seriously, just don't trust me. Please, 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 please. Most of the information online is hot garbage that tells you well, where nothing, did they get it and from? your YouTube recommendations will become mega weird. So please just it's trust true. me. You're going to go you're going to go down a conspiracy uh, spiral where you'll be completely unable to separate fact and fiction. But conspiracy uh, conspiracists will do that and then latch on to a a cognitive bias that they don't even know yet because we'll see somehow, what their info is 18th from, century revolutionary society from central europe has become the big bad of fringe conspiracy what theorists. but we're getting actually symbols on money on may 1st 1776 adam weishaupt a 28 year old what's about to happen in a like, couple months America professor at the University of Ingolstadt decided to start a secret society. Ingolstadt. Now, this isn't as weird as it sounds on the surface. So secret weird. societies were all the rage in the 18th century sure. and Weishaupt's native Bavaria. The most popular. Yeah, where I wanted to get these things detangled is with Freemasons and Illuminati. That's kind of kind of what I've kind of been going for. More Dan Brown books, by the way, with the symbol. Were the Freemasons, who kept lodges in most major cities, but it also boasted chapters of the Rosicrucians, an invisible college of experimenters who variously sought alchemical knowledge, invisible? ancient Egyptian magic, and natural law. Universities were also a particular hotbed for secret societies, formed so students and professors could discuss enlightenment ideals like democracy and secularism. This is what I was about to say that like, it almost seems like this is Illuminati is being created like two centuries too late because we already have the enlightenment. We already have some secularism that's going to be going on, although it is, it's also pre-French revolution. So I guess we're not fully there yet, but nevertheless, enlightenment um, theories become a lot I guess you'd say safer, but more secular. Um, it's really coming back from the Renaissance is what, where a lot of this is going to end up starting. But if this had come by, again, like 1500s, uh, you'd be talking about a group that very much would have had to be, would have to be underground because the religious dogma just completely dominated at that time. Considered dangerous to the social order. But and depending on your work, still did loved in the late 1700s. Ideas. In fact, he was quite literally a child of the Enlightenment. Orphaned at age four, he'd been raised by an uncle was, who unleashed him in his private in library. library of radical texts. So it was likely this type of academic discussion group Weishaupt set out to create. At first, his group was small and consisted mainly of his students. Though he did have to keep those ideals hidden as he attended Jesuit schools, then university. Always under the eye of the monks. The Jesuits <laughs> fostered a culture of surveillance. I want it to be more nefarious. Faculty okay. encouraged to inform on one another. However, the Jesuit zealotry and tenacity to meddle in politics caused their downfall. The Pope abolished their order in 1773, which opened a place for Weishaupt. 
with Jesuits expelled from faculty, he was able to take up a position as professor of canon law, and he decided to use that position to remake the world. I was going to say, canon law is religious law. Uh, that's the, the, the law that all throughout the Middle Ages, by the way, really from the end of the Roman Empire, when the church really took a much larger political role for the next thousand plus years, canon law is religious law, but it's basically instituted and it is punished the same as criminal and civil law. Right. Religious law just is not separate from regular what you would call secular law. So interesting is going to infiltrate things from that side, um, bring in what secular interpretations, but coming from a seat of religious authority. OK, see, Weishaupt had come to believe that religion had a corrosive effect on society and that what humanity needed was a fully secular government run by reason and enlightenment principles rather than superstition. And he knew how to accomplish it. Was he Plato? Via a secret order who would gain positions of influence, then steer the world from the shadows. But of course, before that, he kind of needed to learn how to secret society, by which we mean <laughs> he copied off existing ones. First, he joined a Freemason Lodge in Munich, finding a like-minded ally in one of the Lodge's high-up members. They weren't he persuaded I mean, the, the thing is about Freemasons, they weren't, like, super secret. I mean, you could see their temples. They were publicly around. You could get into it. You, you had to be invited, but you could get initiated and stuff like that. It was just more, like, uh, more exclusive than secret to disclose all of the hidden knowledge of Freemasonry so that they could use it in their own organization. Then Weishaupt directed his students to join the Masons, Using spreading the, the influence the, 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 of his the, new uh, secret aprons. society by embedding it in the established aprons, handshakes, of an existing stuff. one. After all, it was a key tenant of Weishaupt's philosophy that his organization might work under a variety of names and guises, pushing always toward revolutionary change. Those members initiated more members within the Freemason. It is interesting. It is interesting that if they're talking about 1776 there um, now, by then, the American Revolution has begun. The war had begun 1775, but it's within that midst. And then we are just a little over a decade over the French Revolution, which was far more revolutionary. Presenting this new secret society as a legitimate sub faction of Masonry. An order that would, through a study of enlightenment, okay, yeah, philosophy, yeah, yeah. and controlled I teachings, think I remember create that they were. perfect humans. A name spoken of only in whispers. A Top, name that would make the you know, powerful you shudder. Gotta, you gotta level and up. that name was the Order of the Perfectibilists. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Nerds. Oh, you, you thought that name sucked. <laughs> Nerds. Yeah. Well, the Perfectibilists thought so too. So they urged Weishaupt to change it in Even order to attract more recruits. Even they thought it was nerdy. <laughs> oh, and they had just the name to go with. The Illuminati. That's way Think cooler. It. It's powerful and mysterious. Illumination. While also proclaiming their enlightenment ideals. Real brainworm that one is. But like most good ideas, it was stolen. Yeah, Illuminati was a word already used to describe devotees of the enlightenment. And it was also the name of okay. a mystical Catholic sect formed by a Spanish woman in 14. Oh, so it wasn't original. They just didn't seem to care. Like the Masons, they established grades of membership and began writing deep lore and backgrounds claiming ancient knowledge that was partially invented by a member oh and no, partially stolen BS. from published Rosicrucian papers. Uh. To enter, initiates had to write a literary essay and upon passing would ascend to the first grade of membership. Their learning was strictly controlled. You had to do homework. To the you basically had to do homework, get to write an essay before you get the cool kids club. I wonder how they graded them. Desired educational effect. And more Freemason rituals were included in the middle level until the initiate tried to achieve the rank of priest and full entry into the highest level of mysteries. There, they would be shown a table how do you of get treasures to this level? with a crown and scepter. Oh, and this behind level. that, a throne. The initiate would then be told that if this power tempted them, they would be cast out permanently. Oh, to refuse the crown would be to walk the path of obedience to the order and a I promise like that. to help I subvert like that. the system for the cause of the enlightenment. I like that. They're like, okay, you have to be obedient to reason and knowledge and not riches and power. Hey, wait, for now. <laughs> didn't the cult of Mithras last week also involve refusing a crown? Huh, interesting that element keeps popping up. Loyalty was also secured during these tests as part of the initiation rituals involved the candidate telling an examiner their darkest secrets and desires. <laughs> Blackmail material. Like, Sir, tell me your darkest secret to earn trust with the Illuminati. And he's like, Sir, I'm going to be honest with you. I like anime. And there's like, whoa, you would never say that out loud. Should they ever be All right, you're in, bud. Order. The Illuminati were always watching, you see. 
an element Weishaupt borrowed from the Jesuits. He also proposed a sort of kindergarten, where female members would teach Enlightenment texts. And the order spread. Dispersing through the Freemason lodges of Europe, it reached into Austria, France, and other cities in the Holy Roman Empire. In some lodges, half of the members were actually- The Holy Roman Empire is going to last about another 25 years. A few lodges were taken over entirely. This included a lodge Napoleon in Vienna that counted an Mozart that. as a member, but whether or not he knew about the secret inner order is still unknown. Illuminati leadership he knew. did, however, oh, he try totally to recruit knew. people he of totally influence. Knew. And by 1784, the Illuminati had 2,000 members, which included a general, government officials, professors, and a postmaster general who had the power to read anyone's mail. Now, at this point <laughs> in our teachings, you might be wondering, what did Weishaupt do with all that power? Well, I'm going to tell you. What? Nothing. Yeah, he was mostly focused boy. on taking over more and more Freemason lodges, issuing strict guidelines to follow, and trying to support the growing the underground empires. Not exactly doing, a actually. wild act of sabotage. And that's when the whole thing collapsed. No one's quite sure what happened, but in 1784, 84. some Illuminati correspondence fell into government hands, possibly due to the actions of the Rosicrucians, who were kind of sick of the Illuminati messing with their members. The hammer came down fast. First, the Elector Count sent out his troops and police to arrest Illuminati members. And See, this is the last thing that you're li you're still living in um, a an era of absolute monarchy in most European countries, and these types of societies, especially that have such high ranking people, are going to be completely cut under um, and, and cut out, I should say, as they get found out. You know, that's what they said happened to the Knights Templar. You know, as they gained power. Um, and influence that way. So yeah, that you can see once they get out, once the word gets out, that's there's no way that's gonna fly. Question them. The whole thing fell like dominoes, with each raid netting more confessions, denouncements, and documents. And the story was a terrifying one to those in power. This was a secret order dedicated to revolution by subterfuge, which had operated under but didn't the actually lead to any for though, years. Right? The fact it had never gotten around to actually yeah, doing anything that's what I'm was saying. immaterial. Pretty harmless. To embarrass and discredit Still, the group, the Bavarian government published oh, the seized no. documents. They're and silly. by the next year, in 1785, the Holy Roman Emperor banned all secret societies, apart from the Freemasons, who had to register membership lists with the police. Weishaupt himself escaped to sanctuary yeah, in another still German state, where he spent accepted. the rest of his life writing books about Illuminatist ideas and died in his 80s. It sounds For like just a bunch of nerds that want to, like, out-nerd each other. That was it. And, and then in, in actuality, they're all just actually really lazy. <laughs> None of them are actually revolutionaries. They're just lazy. Lazy narcissists. For practical purposes, the Illuminati died in lazy 1784, narcissistic crushed by the Bavarian government. But then the conspiracy theories started. In 1797, two separate books were published in England, alleging that the Illuminati had survived mm. and were the secret puppet masters behind the French Revolution. The books proved especially mm. popular in the newly founded United States, which ironically held many of the same views as Weishaupt. Thomas Jefferson was a fan, but also triggered an era of paranoia about secret societies and hidden plots. From there... Well, so many of the American founding fathers were were um, uh, Freemasons too, so I'm sure word of these other types of like sub-societies definitely would have gotten around i would have gotten around to thing about the french revolution i was gonna why i originally jumped in here was like it didn't really need secret societies to truly orchestrate that that was such a large scale thing um, because it enacted so many different types of people from the absolute lower class of serfdom to the bourgeoisie and and uh wealthy you know um uh uh, business people, and then, you know, even the nobles, so... Yeah. They became a symbol rather than a group. The name pinned in the center of every conspiracy what? fanatic's saying it, it wasn't. An all-purpose boogeyman, mostly because of a really great name they took from other people. So, in a way, <laughs> you could say that the Illuminati does still live on, specifically now in your internet history. Sorry about that. Congratulations, Watcher. You have now achieved the rank of adept in the Ordo Extra Historia. Hail the Watchers! Hail the Patrons! Hail! 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 I'm in? You know, you have just been a delight. You all should come back next week, Knights and maybe, just circle? maybe, you might attain the rank of Quill that Bearer, cool. because we're going to be exploring the Knights of the Golden Circle, a group set on building a slave empire in the Americas. That happened. Well, an empire that used slavery 
an empire of former slaves like Haiti, but creating an empire. Anyways, if you want me to keep following this kind of series, looks like they're doing a series on secret societies. Let me know. Here's my final thoughts, though. Well, I guess what I came away with this is that the Illuminati was actually a lot lamer than they could have been. Or maybe some of the lore had come around, too. So, eh, whatever. Are any of you a member of the Illuminati? Let me know down in the comments below. All right, with that, we'll see you all next time.